Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Telosizer, the Solution for Precise Detection and Quantitative Measurement of Telomere Length. I am Marie Stone of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Genomic Vision. To learn more, visit genomicvision.com. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. This webinar is educational and thus offers free continuing education credits. Please click on the Continuing Education window at the bottom of your screen to obtain your credits. I'd like to now welcome our speaker, Mark Lynch, Director of Global Commercial and Marketing at Genomic Vision. Mark, you may now begin your presentation. Welcome to the Genomic Vision Telosizer webinar. My name is Mark Lynch. I'm the Director of Global Commercial and Marketing at Genomic Vision. I'm here today to describe to you Telosizer, which is a revolutionary solution for the precise detection of telomere condition. We hope you enjoy today's webinar. The agenda for today's session is split up into three parts. The first is to provide an introduction to molecular combing. The second part is to provide an overview of telomere biology and introduce to you telosizer, which as mentioned, is our precise method for the detection of telomere length and the physical features of telomeres. The last part is to announce to you today our telosizer triathlon program aimed at those in academia who wish to try out the telosizer solutions. Let's start with the introduction to molecular combing. Molecular combing is genomic vision's proprietary method for stretching out, aligning, and immobilizing DNA. The principle of molecular combing is that we stretch, align, and immobilize DNA molecules on hydrophobic surfaces, such as our ingrained, engraved cover slips. These engraved cover slips are proprietary cover slips that contain silene. The silene enables DNA molecules to bind in a solution, and we then pull the DNA to create fibers of the DNA in an uncoiled fashion. This enables us to identify the quantitative features of the DNA, such as structural variants and replication tracts. And it allows those quantitative features to be analyzed visually and at the molecular level in parallel. An example of the fibers of DNA on one of our engraved cover slips is shown on the right hand side of the slide, where we have YoYo1, which is an intercalating dye that shows the immobilization of DNA to the cover slip and the appropriate staining. The example here is the type of density that you would expect to see. And it also shows a uniformity because with molecular combing and our fiber based technologies, we use constant stretching factors to provide visualization and quantification of single molecule DNA that can be used to quantify the length and distances of genomic features. Therefore, our molecular combing application has revolutionized molecular combing to enable visualization and quantification of structural features of DNA for a range of applications in single molecule DNA analysis. As mentioned, we have our molecular combing application. This is shown on the left hand side of the slide. And in the schematic where you can see molecular combing, this here is what we've just described on the previous slide. 
The key take home here is that any sample from cells, from blood or from tissue can be used for molecular combing. Provided that you have anything from half a million cells onwards, you'll be able to use this application for things like replication analysis and telomere analysis that we'll talk about later in the presentation. And furthermore, Genomic Vision provides the appropriate DNA extraction kit to extract high molecular weight DNA that is enabling you to get ultra long fibers to then comb and understand the structural features of that DNA. If that's not enough, we also provide the second critical part of our technology, which is our genomic Morse code. The genomic Morse code encompasses a fluorescent and spatial molecular analysis to be able to identify repeat elements and features such as deletion events, amplification events and inversion events. The genomic Morse code is a genomic detection strategy that's used to identify known and undiscovered structural variants. To go back to the example here, where we start with the molecular comb DNA, this molecular comb DNA is stretched out onto our engraved cover slips. And then we use a combination of fluorescent probes of different colors, for example, here, in blue, red and green, and also in terms of different sizes and spatial resolution so that a specific area can be identified. So, for example, in genomic Morse code, we're able to look for different repeatable elements based on the number of signals that we get, based on the distance between the different probes, and based on the length and the color of the probes. As an example, if we have a deletion event shown here in gene one, it could be the case that we have a genomic Morse code that is in blue, red, and green. We have the target deletion event that we're interested in shown here in the yellow. And when that deletion event takes place, our blue and green remain constant, but the red actually becomes shorter. Another example is in the amplification step. In the amplification step, in this case, our motif is green, red, and blue. The amplification that is taking place starts very small, but then when the amplification event occurs, we get three different regions. As a consequence, our green and our blue remain constant, but the red elongates. And in similar situation with inversion, in gene three, we again start with blue, we then have our green and our red and our blue again. But in this inversion event, we swap around the red and the green. And so as a result, we're able to measure that. Essentially, our genomic Morse code is a recognition of different motifs and the code being based on the probe size and color, but also the distance in between. So, Genomic Morse code, along with the constant stretching factor in molecular combing, enables an accurate and reproducible measurement of the length of the probes and the gaps that, that occur in between them. And it means that we can observe any change in structural variation or DNA characteristics without performing any PCR amplification. There are a few steps in our molecular combing workflow. As mentioned, the first part is the collection of the cells, blood and tissues. Once those cells, blood and tissues are collected, Genomic Vision provides a kit called the Fiber Prep Kit that performs a large molecular weight DNA extraction. And once that large molecular weight DNA extraction occurs, we then have our genomic Morse code probe design which can be designed custom, or we have numerous off-the-shelf assays that can be acquired, and those are labeled. We then use our fiber comb system, which is shown here at the bottom of the slide. And this fiber comb system is a small benchtop device that enables the coating and the stretching 
of uniform DNA fibers to perform the micro precise combing. We then immunostain that combed DNA with the probes and the genomic Morse codes that we described earlier. And as mentioned earlier, that's why we end up with these different motifs that you can see in the schematic here of different stretches of green and stri different stretches of red. And we perform the Im imaging and the analysis using either our Fiber Vision or Fiber Vision S instrumentation, which performs the scanning and also houses our Fiber Studio platforms to be able to perform the automated analysis. Although today's webinar is all about telosizer, which is our newest application measuring the precise length of telomeres, there are multiple applications enabled by molecular combing. In this slide, you can see that we look at various different types of applications, such as in genetic disease research, such as looking at repeat expansion and contraction to associate diseases such as looking at virus cellular integration, for example, looking at the uptake of HIV into cells, and also the detection of large structural rearrangements. Our molecular combing technology is also used for cancer research, where we look at the accurate measurement of DNA replication kinetics, including features such as fork speed and fork symmetry. This therefore enables the identification of rearrangements in predisposing genes and genome assembly and characterization. Generally, the genetic background and cancer research markets are accommodated by the academic markets. However, we also have a more bioproduction based part of our technology, which taps into genome engineering and novel therapies and drug development. The bottom left hand side talks about how molecular combing can be used for the identification of unexpected rearrangements, again using that same genetic Morse code technology we mentioned a few moments ago. And this enables the identification and the assessment of how efficient a gene editing method is. The application of molecular combing also taps into drug, drug development for the identification of various features of DNA, replication stress, as well as drug candidate validation. The common theme across all of these applications are the high resolution images that you can see on either side of the DNA double helix. Our genomic Morse code technology and combed DNA provides these high resolution images of the structural features of the genome. As such, molecular combing helps to characterize genomes across multiple innovative applications in genetics, cancer research, genome engineering, and in drug development. Now, because this seminar is based on telosizer, another critical application or part of that is replication analysis. And our molecular combing assays are commonly used for what we call RCA, replication combing assays. So we can use our molecular combing applications to understand the complete characterization of any replication events throughout the genome. And we use our genomic Morse code and our replication combing assay to identify replication events, to understand the precise measurement of replication speed, and we use automatic signal detection to identify inter-origin distance of the symmetry of the replication fork. The image on the right hand side with the white arrows shows examples of where we identify different lengths of replication events that are taking place. An example shown where the pointer is currently hovering over, you can see that we start with a particular fiber of DNA and we have one replication event followed by another. We can use that same technology to identify different replication events in the same fiber. As such, our molecular combing and replication combing assay provides the complete characterization of any replication events through the entire genome and is really becoming a primary application in DNA replication analysis. And while in this example, we're providing the 
identification of all the replication events in the genome, you can get a lot more detailed in it. And an example of that here is in the accurate classification of DNA replication tracks. And so you can see here again, using our, gen uh, using our genomic Morse code uh, technology, you can see the initiation event taking place here in green, red, blue, red, green. And you can see that that initiation event is happening here. And the second initiation event with the longer red signal is taking place here. And the third initiation event in green is taking place here. And the same is true for the termination events. So the replication combing assay enables the detection of all of the different combinations of the firings and timings of the origins of replication. And really, this assay helps to simplify uncovering complex replication kinetics that are not possible by other methods. Now, we're going to talk more about telomere later on, but there are two other applications that we want to introduce to you in this part of the webinar today. The next application at a very high level is a diagnostic application, which is CEIVD for the characterization of locus modifications for screening of the D4, Z4 repeat units. This is a solution that is a CEIVD assay using molecular combing to characterize the D4Z4 repeats of the 4Q35 and 10Q26 loci, which is responsible for the cause of a rare disease called FSHD. The molecular combing assay for the study of FSHD enables the identification of the 4QA and the 10QA regions of the genome. This is shown on the left-hand side of the slide shown here, where we have the specific 4QA and the specific 10QA being identified using our, our, our combing assay. We also identify 4QB and 10QB. And again, using our genomic Morse code technology, you're able to identify those specific regions of that disease. And furthermore, when there's a proximal deletion in the 4QA, in particular deletion P13E11, we're actually able to see that deletion event taking place by a gap in the genomic Morse code. And so our assay actually doesn't just provide the presence or absence of FSHD, but it also characterizes what is going on at the genetic level in the subjects that are presented for FSHD screening. And this is a powerful tool to solve complex rearrangements that are often missed by technologies such as Southern Blot. The last application that I'd like to introduce to you today before we go on to telosizer is actually our quality combing assay. We mentioned earlier on in the webinar that if you're working in bioproduction or drug discovery, that we have various assays under the branding of quality combing assays that can be used for screening of particular virus uptake, or so example is virus integration in cells, or that are used for therapeutic genome editing, both ex vivo and in vivo. In other words, looking at that viral uptake. The same quality combing assay can also be used as shown on the far left for basic research, looking at gene editing, for example, and verifying the gene edits that you have programmed have been successful, and also used for biomanufacturing, engineering cells to make new biologics. In particular, the biomanufacturing example, the molecular combing based quality control and cell line development. This really is a true bioproduction based application where the vector would be engineered and a cell line would be engineered. And our molecular combing quality combing assay can be used for the screening or the clonal selection of that engineered cell line. Once that selection takes place, single cell cloning can occur and the same quality combing assay can be used again to screen and make sure the clonal selection occurs. And then as that cell line becomes expanded and becomes banked, the quality combing assay can be used for the genetic characterization and genetic stability testing. 
So our molecular copying quality control assay can be used for screening vector identity, vector integrity, copy number, co-integration, and structural rearrangements. We won't talk much about this in the remainder of today's webinar, but on our Lab Roots page, we've got pre-records of our summer webinar program that talk in detail about the quality combing assay. So the second part of today's webinar is all about telomere biology and our new telosizer product. Let's start by talking a little bit about what telomeres are. So telomeres are a five prime to three prime repeated motif of TTA GGG at the ends of human chromosomes that regulate cellular plurative capacity. The telomeres essentially protect the chromosomes from deterioration and from fusion. And so over time, telomeres are shortened after each cell division until the cells become senescent. And a shortening of telomeres are generally associated with an increased risk of multiple diseases. There are numerous telomere biology disorders, TBDs, and these TBDs are caused by non physiological events are at the side of the telomere. They really fall into two buckets. The first is premature shortening, where genome instability and loss of fundamental functions occur. An example of that is in genetic disorders and in aging. The second bucket is telomere extension, where genome instability causes a gain of function, for example, in cancer. The great news is that no matter what the TBD is, the telosizer product from genomic vision using molecular combing can actually be used in oncology, can be used in age-related diseases, and can be used in genetic diseases. So oncology, age-related disease, and genetic diseases. And the idea, as shown in the literature, is really that as telomere length changes over time, using telomere as a potential aging biomarker is appropriate for telomere therapies, age-associated diseases, and cancer. And there's a whole range of diseases that are ongoing to try to identify if there is a particular biomarker that's associated with telomere therapies or age-associated diseases. And so, in the case of oncology, telosizer can be applied to understand cancer, stratification, and drug efficiency. In age-associated disease, telosizer can be applied to diseases associated with aging. And genetic diseases, telosizer can be applied for the investigation of telomere therapies. So telosizer is a critical application that is used for TBD and in oncology. As mentioned earlier on in the presentation, the idea is that we use our, rep, our telosizer application to study the TTA GGG repeat units that are found at the ends of telomeres. Our technology is particularly applicable to that region because other methods that rely on PCR would become hindered by that constant repeat element. And because molecular combing in principle does not get impacted by those repeat elements, it means that we get a resolution that is not always possible by other applications, such as next generation sequencing, real-time PCR, QFISH, or FlowFISH. And we'll show more about what we mean by that later on in the webinar. As mentioned earlier, we have long telomeres which show the preservation of telomere capping, shown on the left-hand side of the slide in the schematic, and that has problems based on DNA damage response, cell cycle checkpoints through ATM and ATR. And that can result in cell death, senescence and aging. We also have the flip side of that coin, which is the shortening of the telomeres shown at the bottom of the schematic, where we have the end replication problem of telomere shortening. Telomere shortening results in protein loss and telomere uncapping. And in that case, you get around about a crisis that takes place, particularly in cancer, which is really about 90% in telomerase and 10% in ALT. 
The key take home on this slide is that in oncology, telomere length quantification is essential to uncover the role of telomeres in genome instability and cancer profiling. And in addition to telosizer precisely measuring telomere shrinking, it expands the utility by being able to enable a direct quantification of genome instability by detecting interstitial telomere sequences and true telomere sequences. And the image that you can see at the bottom of this slide, in particular here, is an example of the resolution that is, a, that is provided using telosizer. The green is the DNA fibers, the telomere is shown in red. And so in this example, shown here where the pointer is now, this is showing a long true telomere sequence. The second example here is showing a short true telomere sequence. And the third example here is showing the effects of an interstitial telomere sequence. But please keep in mind, we are doing this whole genome. These three examples are just three examples of fiber in the whole genome. To see the true power of this technology, you see that in the next slide, we actually use telosizer for the precise detection of telomere conditions. The best example here is shown where we have one of our cover slips. We mentioned that earlier on in the presentation, an engraved cover slip. And that cover slip, if we take this very small section within it, this is the type of density that you can see inside that small region of the cover slip. And so our Fiber Studio software actually goes in and automatically detects the red signal. The reason that it automatically detects that red signal is because that is the telomere. That's the beauty of telosizer. Every other method, you would have to go in and have primers and probes specifically designed for that. With our telosizer application and the molecular combing technology, we go in and we can automatically detect all the telomeres in that genome. And so it uses the um, artificial intelligence built into our fiber smart application, which is due to launch later this year, to actually measure the physical DNA fiber. And we can home in on each of these regions to actually truly see the length of the telomere, whether it's a short telomere, a long telomere, precisely measure that telomere length and provide a high resolution image of each of the telomeres. So our technology really does provide not only the individual lengths of each telomere, but it provides the distribution per subject and provides an unbiased result for telomere condition. And that's why telosizer is the precise detection of telomere condition. Here's an example of the type of images that you would get telomere by telomere. Long green single DNA fiber and a red telomere length. And we put numerical values on each of those so you see the changes in telomere length along with the distribution and along with this high resolution image. A few moments ago, we mentioned that the Fiber Studio uses our Fiber Smart application due to launch later on. This Fiber Smart application uses the power of deep machine learning to analyze engraved cover slips. And in this example, they were derived from HeLa cells. And we use that as a training model for telosizer to determine the interstitial telomere sequences and the true telomere sequences. The image on the left hand side is one of our cover slips. The little blue line that you can see here is actually what our bio IT group uses to train the algorithms to identify the long single molecules of DNA within the genome on the cover slip. The red that you can observe here is actually the telomere. And so we use deep machine learning to plot out what the telomere is. And once the telomere declines, we identify the red. And this is being found to occur with sensitivity of 85%, which as we build up more data will improve to close to 100%. And the true value of the telosizer and the analysis that we perform using telosizer and the Fiber Studio with the inbuilt Fiber Smart technology 
is that we have got a very short time in terms of how we analyze all the telomeres within the genome. And so if we actually go into details of what the workflow for telosizer actually looks like, you can see it here. Sample collection takes a couple of days. Once that sample is collected, we then perform single DNA combing, which takes about seven minutes. And that's followed by a hybridization event, which takes two hours. Once that hybridization is complete, we then take one to two hours to perform the visualization and the analysis of all genome of telomeres. Now, this workflow and timing is shown here really just for your reference, because Telosizer is actually a service product. The samples, in terms of the collected samples, are sent to Genomic Vision, to our services lab in Paris in France, and Genomic Vision perform this end-to-end -end workflow for you. And we provide you back with a report of all the individual telomere lengths, the distribution per patient or per subject, and the high-resolution images of those telomeres. So you might be asking, what are the specifications of Telosizer? The technical specifications of Telosizer, which actually can be found in our product flyer and our product application note on our website, is really the measurement of real physical telomeres. We detect both the true telomere sequences and the interstitial telomere sequences, and we can measure genome-wide telomere shortening and telomere extension. The resolution, the actual telomere length range that we can measure is from 1 kb up to 300 kb. And we provide as part of our service results back to you, the minimum, the maximum, the mean size, the standard deviation and the distribution of lengths. And our sensitivity is 87% using our fiber smart technology inside Fiber Studio. As part of our validation of Telosizer, we of course looked across multiple sample types. And we found that we were able to use a whole range of different samples for Telosizer to get the telomere distribution range and also the actual length of individual telomeres. And so in this example, taken from our application note, which is downloadable from our website, you can see that we looked at U2OS cells, HeLa cells, white blood cells, mouse liver tissue, as well as commercial DNA. And we were able to get both the distribution range using telosizer and the individual telomere length. And that's different actually from what you get with other methods. With other methods, you actually would get things like the mean telomere length, such as in TRF, or the arbitrary, arbitrary units, such as in QFISH, or relative telomere length, such as in FlowFISH, or real-time PCR. Whereas with telomere, sorry, with telosizer, genomic vision has been able to provide you with the telomere length distribution and the individual telomere lengths. So in this example, which is also found on our application note, downloadable from our website, we looked at multiple cancer cell types to determine the position of telosizer. And you can see that when we look at these different cell types, HeLa's, IICF, U2OS, and HT1080, you can see that we actually get much greater precision in telosizer with telomere length distribution compared to TRF, QFISH, FlowFISH, and real-time PCR. The last part is really to show you that it's also applicable to translational medicine-based applications. And this here is an example of a family carrying genetic history for breast cancer reanalyzed by telosizer. Subject one, shown on the left-hand side, has the non-pathological mutation and normal telomere lengths. Subject two carries the defective gene, which results in an altered telomere length. And the beautiful thing when we look at this is that based on the number of region of interest or ROI, you can see each of the individual telomere lengths and your analysis software using the Fiber Studio provides that distribution. So not only do you get the distribution, in this case for subject one of 8.3 kb, you also get the individual normalized length intensities. The same is true in subject two. And when we look at subject two, we also identify the specific distribution of telomeres 
And when we compare that to Southern blot, while we get also a distribution, the thing that telosizer provides that Southern blots does not is the individual telomere lengths. And so compared to Southern blot analysis, telosizer provides insight into the distribution of telomere length per, per patient, and as such precisely identifies the telomere length in each case. And therefore, telosizer really is an excellent service offered by genomic vision for determining and understanding telomere condition in cancer and in other genetic diseases. The last part is just to show you exactly what the telosizer product services are all about. We actually have four services for telosizer. This schematic is showing all of the workflow for telosizer from sample collection through the end result. Depending on your lab's configuration, depending on lab budget, we have different services. The common service that is used is actually our Premium Plus service, which offers end-to-end -end from DNA extraction to telomere length reporting, and that's called EasyComb Plus Telosizer. But we also have options for those that don't want genomic vision to do the analysis, but just get the images back and do your own analysis. This is called EasyComb Telosizer. And we also have solutions for those that want to do the extraction and the combing on site because there are clients that have our fiber prep kits and also the easy comb system. And they can use either easy scan telosizer where genomic vision simply do the hybridization and the image acquisition or easy scan plus telosizer where we do that hybridization image acquisition, but we also perform the visualization analysis and the reporting. The take home here is that we've got a variety of different services that can be used to study telomeres. The last part of today's webinar is to just talk to you about something that's really exciting and we're very happy to be launching, and that is our Telosizer Triathlon. The Telosizer Triathlon is a new program that is just launching today. The program launching today is open until the 29th of November 2021. And it's us at Genomic Vision giving you an opportunity if you work in academia to be considered for complementary access to telosizer. In other words, if you've got a project that really taps into neurological diseases or age-related conditions or cancer, and you would like to get some free access to telosizer, you can submit your project today by going to our Telosizer landing page on our home on our website. And here at the bottom of the slide is the URL for accessing that website. We'll also be providing you with the flyer as a follow up of attending today's webinar to offer you access to Telosizer and our Telosizer Triathlon program until November 29th, 2021. That, I will wrap up today's webinar. We'd like you to take home from today's webinar that Telosizer is a new service for the analysis of telomere lengths that can be applied to various model organisms. It uses molecular combing and provides an incredible resolution that is not possible by other lab methodologies. And it uniquely detects and distinguishes between true telomere sequences and interstitial telomere sequences to allow a clear understanding of potential errors caused by DNA damage repair in cancer and other genetic diseases. Throughout the webinar, we mentioned our application note and our flyer. These are all available on our Telosizer website, shown on the URL at the bottom of this slide. With that, I'd like to thank you for today's webinar and attending today's webinar. If you have any questions, you can contact us at sales at genomicvision.com. And for now, we'll pause the webinar and take any questions. Thank you, Mark, for your informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. Let's get started. Our first question is, what is the desired number of cells required to use telosizer? Yeah, thank you for that question. This, the lowest input of cells really would be about 50,000 cells, um, but we would go up to around about half a million cells. And the reason for such a range 
is really dependent on the size of telomere change that one is trying to measure. So what you will have saw in the presentation and on our application note is that our resolution for telomere length is between um, 1 kb and 300 kb. At the lower input of cells, you'll not see the small shifts in telomeres. So that's why we would say anything between 50,000 and 500,000 cells. And with 500,000 cells, you'll actually be able to see shifts of telomere length of actually between 0.8 kb. So that would be the range between 50,000 and 500,000 cells. All right, thank you. Um, next question. Has telosizer been used with cancer cells? If so, which cancer cells specifically? Yeah, it has been used with cancer cells. And in one of the studies that we presented in today's webinar, we actually looked at the stratification of breast cancer using telosizer. That was one of the plots that were in the that was in the, the webinar that really talks about um, patient-derived cells. So we actually have used breast cancer cells um, to really study the carrier uh, mutation for, from BRCA and understand if telomere could be an effective uh, biomarker in that disease. So we have looked, for example, at breast cancer cells as an example of that. We've also got studies that have ongoing with things like pancreatic cancer cells as well. So this is, this is something that we've done, yeah. Thank you. Um, next question, how can we use telosizer? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, so as mentioned in the presentation, right now, uh, telosizer is a service product from Genomic Vision. Um, that means that essentially we um, at Genomic Vision run the workflow and we have a service laboratory that's located in our corporate headquarters in Paris and in France to basically receive the samples. So the best way to, to use Telosizer is to get in touch with us at sales at genomicvision.com, or actually you can use our, our website. We've got, a, we've got a nice landing page for Telosizer and tell us about the project, uh, numbers of samples, um, the type of service you require, because as mentioned in the presentation, we've got various different types of service, whether you wanna literally just send Genomic Vision the sales and we do everything, or for those clients that already have some of our benchtop devices for combing DNA, um, those can be used to prepare the, the slides and send them to us. So the best way is really to get in touch. But to answer the question directly, this is a service. So you send the cells to us or you send the cover slips to us and we process the samples. So we take the, the labor of the workflow and we generate the reports that contain all of the individual telomere lengths that contain the standard deviation, the images, and all of the information you need to get an understanding of the telomere condition. All right, thank you. Um, our next question, what is the turnaround time after we send genomic vision samples by which we get the data? Yeah, so our current turnaround time is between four and six weeks. We launched Telosizer about two and a half weeks ago and we've saw a really great uh, interest from you know, large pharmaceutical um, biotech companies that, that are actually starting to run the services with genomic vision. So our kind of standard turnaround times at the moment are between four and six weeks. Naturally, when we look at the projects with our clients, when they contact us, we look at the number of samples, we look at the expected turnaround time, if there are any replicates, and sometimes it can be shorter than that, sometimes it can be longer than that, but our average turnaround time is between four and six weeks. Thank you. Next question, do you provide the actual image analysis of telomeres, and if so, how? Yeah, we do, is the short answer. Um, so what you will have saw in the presentation today is some examples of the types of data that we at Genomic Vision provide as part of the telosizer services. So for example, we provide uh, the individual telomere lens, we provide the distribution of the telomeres within that biological sample. And we also provide the, the high resolution individual telomere images. The how that we are able to do that really relates back to the Fiber Studio software and our very smart algorithm called Fiber Smart, which uses artificial intelligence to automatically detect the red signal, the red signal being the, the telomere signal 
and that would be measuring either long telomeres or short telomeres or the interstitial telomere sequences. And so the reason that we are able to provide that is because of that algorithm, because of that artificial intelligence within the software. And frankly, the way we provide that to you is by providing access to our Fiber Studio. So it's all part of the Telosizer service where you can go in and get your images and look at those images. Thank you. Next question. Can Telosizer analyze cell lines with critically short telomeres? Also, in alt cell lines where there is large length heterogeneity, will there be a bias towards analysis of the longer telomeres, i.e. easier to detect? Okay, so I'll split that question up into two. So the first part, I think, was really related to critically short telomeres. So in our, in our specifications for Telosizer, we, we cite that we can do from 1 kb up to 300 kb. Um, we actually can do shorter than 1 kb. We would have to talk out the density of the cover slips that we have to create to get shorter than 1 kb, but we have experience of going down to 0.8 kb. So the short answer is that we can look at critically short telomeres. The second part of that question, I believe, related to um, alt cell lines where there's a large length of heterogeneity and is there any bias uh, towards the longer telomeres because they're slightly easier to detect. So again, we can go into a more technical discussion on this. It's largely related to the density of the cover slips. So we actually recommend that we get a density of around about 600 regions of interest on those cover slips. And with that region, um, we don't actually observe any of the bias, but we would have to have a conversation as to, to how that is the case. The key part here really is that with Telosizer, like our other applications, we don't um, have uh, any PCR amplification taking place because the molecular combing technology really relies on hybridization. So we don't get that bias that you can sometimes get when you perform PCR amplification in applications such as next generation sequencing or real-time PCR. Thank you. Next question, how about studying telomere replication by combining IDU and CIDU and teleprobes? <laughs> That's a brilliant question. Um, so, so I think this question must come from someone who clearly understands our our value and the, the critical parts of Telosizer. So this is something that's absolutely uh, on our radar. Um, we really um, are trying to do this. Uh, this would assume you know, the next versions or the next partnerships that we would uncover as, as genomic vision. But uh, yeah, we, we are looking at that. We don't have any product or application not to talk to on that point right now, but it is something that is very interesting, especially in the DNA and, and the damage and repair setting. All right. Um, next question. How can we exclude that small telomeres are not due to broken fibers? That's a good question also. Um, and maybe I can take that back to the start of our webinar today, our presentation today, where we talk about how we do the, um, how we comb the DNA out onto the engraved cover slips, where we use this so-called constant stretching factor. And so when we do that, you know, Essentially, many people can stretch DNA, but the way, the proprietary way in which genomic vision does that ensures that we actually don't really get broken fragments. And so even if we did get broken fragments, the algorithm, the, the artificial intelligence algorithm that's built into Fiber Smart, which is in Fiber Studio for Telosizer, would be able to call it out. But without going into massive technical detail, the way in which we constantly stretch the DNA onto the engraved cover slip minimizes any broken fragments that we would get. Thank you. Next question. Can telomere analysis be combined with replication fork analysis in the same sample set? That's another very good question. So, you know, We've done quite a few of these webinars, actually, and in the summer we did one on replication um, as well. And, and we mentioned even in this webinar, actually, that we've got a replication combing assay. One can imagine that, you know, to really truly understand the kind of DNA damage genome, which I actually saw a paper about a few months ago, one has to look not just at the replication dynamics and kinetics, 
one has to also look at the impact of that on the telomere. And so while, again, to go back to the earlier question where someone was asking about the IDU and combining teleprobes, one can imagine that we want to be able to look at as many factors as we can to really characterize what is going on in, in damaging the genome, telomere and replication. We're just not there yet, but it's a very good question. And certainly the molecular combing technology can be used for that. Thank you. You know, it looks like we have time for one more question. Can your genomic Morse code system coupled to the RCA be used to study DNA replication kinetics at specific genomic loci? Well, so this is something that's very interesting. So it goes back to using our, you know, the what, what we call GMC, genomic Morse code. It goes back to being able to, rather than looking at that at the whole genome level, looking at that in a targeted level. And the answer is yes. Um, we've got some clients who actually already do that on the, on the replication part. Um, and then one can imagine if you're looking at it in terms of telomere, do we want to get quite specific on the chromosome level, for example, for the telomeres? And again, that's something that we do want to look at. So the, the short answer to the question is, can, is yes, it can be coupled to um, RCA at a specific loci. Um, the longer part is we would have to have a technical discussion as to how we would do that as part of our uh, genomic Morse code assay design. Well, thank you. And thank you again, Mark, for your time today and your important research. We would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Genomic Vision, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions, questions we did not have time for today, and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>